Good morning, my friends, and welcome to Solving Outdoors with Clover. Uh, you don't even want to know. It is really cold out here, so I'm going to try to get through this one efficiently. I just have one little announcement before we start talking about this puzzle, which is that if you go to twitch.tv slash sudokucon, this Sunday, April 7th, we are starting our series of streams to promote some of what we're going to be doing at SudokuCon, which is an in-person meetup for Sudoku setters and solvers that's coming up in April 2025. We're going to be doing streams most weekends for the next couple of weeks, and the one this Sunday features setting by Tall Cat and Malrog. I think you guys will really enjoy that. Go subscribe to that Twitch channel or go follow that Twitch channel and you will find out when we go live. I believe it is 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern time on Sunday. Anyways, today we're solving a puzzle by Philip Newman that was originally posted in Gas on April 3rd, 2024. And it's called Look Ma No GSP. And I feel like I need to explain that title like I often do with the titles of Philip's puzzles. In this case, GSP refers to a theorem called girth symmetric placement that tells you something about symmetry of puzzle grids and symmetry of solutions. And it boils down to if a puzzle is unique and it has fully symmetric cluing, it will also have a fully symmetric solution. And I imagine that Philip could be bribed to walk through why exactly that is and what it implies. But what Philip is talking about here is that even though his puzzle appears to have symmetric cluing, because he's used black dots in some of these cells and white dots in the symmetric cells, and black and white dots have an asymmetric effect on the grid, they aren't exact opposites of each other, they don't apply to exactly opposite pairs of cells, then that doesn't technically fall under the category of having symmetric cluing. So this puzzle should not be expected to have a symmetric solution. If it did, that would be very funny. So the rules today, standard Sudoku rules. So we're placing the digits one through nine, ones each in each row, each column, and each heavily outlined three by three region. Then we also have two variant rules. So first one is killer. So we have some cages in the grid. And each cage has a small number in its top left corner, and that, that number just gives you the sum of the digits that appear in that cage. So for instance, the sum of these three digits will be seven. We also have some black and white dots in the grid. These are Kropke pairs. So if you have a white dot separating two cells, the digits in those two cells have to be consecutive. For instance, four and five, and either way around. And if you have a black dot separating two cells, the digits in those two cells have to be in a one to two ratio. In other words, one of them has to be twice as large as the other, such as three and six. And as we know and love on this channel, when you see a kropke Paris puzzle, the first move is very often going to be to look for places where there are strings of three cells separated by black dots that see each other. And if you check this out, this is what Philip has given us. So the only way to do a string of three cells that are all separated by Kropke is to have them be either one, two, four, or two, four, eight, unless the two end cells don't see each other, which is not the case here. And here, because we have these contained within a seven cage, we know that this must be the one, two, four case. And then down here, Okay, we know two can't go in the middle, so that's got to be four. This is the two, four, eight case, and we can even confirm our work by saying, okay, the cage total here is 14. Therefore, these digits had better sum to 14, or else we're in serious trouble. So two plus four plus eight, it is in fact 14. Okay, so from there, let's carry on. So what looks the next most restricted? I, I tend to think that black Kropke are easier to get a foothold with than white Kropke. I'm going to take a look up here just because I happen to know that the only way to make a six cage in three cells is for it to be one, two, and three. Only two of those numbers are in a one to two ratio. So that's one and two, and then that's going to be three. So now I know because there's a one and two in these cells and there's a one and two in these cells that the only places I could possibly put the digits one and two in row three are going to be in this cage. So the third digit has to be whatever you add to one and two to make a total of eight. So this is one, two, and five. The one and two will go on that black dot because five is not in a one to two ratio with anything convenient. Up here, I'm going to need another one to two ratio, but I've already used the digits one, two, and three. So the smaller number in my ratio 
can only be a minimum of four and also a maximum of four. I can't go bigger than four because then I would have to double it and get up to 10 plus. So this is going to have to be a four eight pair. The four will go there because of the one four pair here. And then there's my eight. That sums to 12. So my remaining digit is six. Now here I need one more kind of sneaky digit that can go on a one to two ratio. There are only so many of those digits, like five, seven, and nine can never go on a black dot whatsoever, regardless of anything else going on. So really we can mark these as five, seven, and nine. This has to be our one remaining possible digit, which is six. This therefore is a six, three pair. So we can conclude that's a five to make up the sum of 14 correctly. We have one more pair here that is on a black dot. Uh, I, just because I was already doing this, let's go ahead and mark this out. So we know this can't be a 3-6 pair because this cell can be neither 3 nor 6. So we know it's 1-2, 2-4, two, two, four, or 4-8, four, but we've already used 2, 4, and 8 in these cells. So this must be a 1, which makes this a 2. 1 plus 2 is 3, therefore that's an 8. And also we're going to go up here and use that 1 to clear this up. Now let's turn to some white dot stuff, right? So we have this 18 cage. And there are a couple of kind of cute shortcuts for how we could approach this. Here's the one that I'm going to take. And this is relevant because this was used in a puzzle of mine that Bill solved in this channel just a couple of days ago, where my observation for this is in order to do this, I'm going to need to alternate between odd and even. I've already used three of the four existing even digits in region five, two, four, and eight. So I definitely can't go even, odd, even. I would need too many even digits. So the even digit has to be in the middle. And the only even digit I have left is six. So that's going to be five and seven. I'll give you the other cute trick I thought of for free, actually. <laughs> um, so we're summing to 18 and we're doing it with three consecutive digits. Quick shortcut to do that is to just divide 18 by three. That gives you six and that will always be the middle digit in this scenario. So here we need our two remaining digits, which are three and nine. This is a 12 cage. If this was nine, the one next to it would have to be eight, which would be a serious problem for making this total 12. So that's going to be three. That's going to be a nine. Now this will have to be either a two or a four, and there's already a two in the row. So that's a four. And that makes our last digit here five. Now I'm just looking to see if there's more Sudoku I can do. I can place a five in row four here because that's the only position in that row that's not already seen by a five. And then these are going to be one, seven, and nine. I need to place a six in this row. And then I can place a seven right here. So let's just mark in the last couple of digits that we have to place in this region. So these are going to be one, four, and nine. That's not a nine. And in this region, we're going to need two, three, and eight. Eight can't go in this nine cage. Now, what can we do with this nine cage? So there are we could probably wait on this a little bit, but this is the next thing that jumps out to me. So I'm going to go ahead and walk you through this. So there are three ways to make a sum of nine. One of them is right out because it's one, three, and five, and we simply can't use the digit five because it's already there in the column. The other remaining ones are two, three, and four, or one, two, and six. Now I promise, because I know Philip, that he has put another way of avoiding this into this puzzle. I'm going to go ahead and use it, which is if this nine cage consisted of one, two, and six, I wouldn't be able to put anything in this cell because the cell could only be one or two. I would end up using both of those. So this has to be a two, three, four triple. So now that makes that a one and makes that a two. Now, if we look at this 11 cage, ooh, let's use some parity. So these are going to be one odd and one even. So they're going to sum to an odd number. And that means that the remaining digit will be an even number to make an odd total of 11. So if this was an eight, then these would have to sum to three, which would be one and two. If this was a two, these would have to sum to nine, which would be four and five, which is invalid. So let's make it an eight with a one, two, which places a one here. And again, I very much suspect that that's something that, um, that Philip did not build into this puzzle to require it be used, but I think it's kind of fun. So what's the point of doing a walkthrough if I don't show you all the little fun things? So this one, two pair takes care of the two there, which resolves this two is next to three and that's a four. How about right here? So 24 can only be formed in one way in three cells that all see each other. That is seven, eight, nine. 23 is always six, eight, nine. So we're going to make that a nine, eight, because that's the only consecutive pair out of those digits. That's now a seven and a nine. This is three and four. These cells contain six and seven. These cells contain eight and nine. And that's going to resolve our seven, nine pair from way back. 
These digits are going to be five and seven, and we know the order because of the seven nine pair. And that seven is actually really meaningful because we need to make 22 and three cells now. Two ways to do that, nine, eight, and five, and nine, seven, and six, which is now off the table because we used our seven already. So this is going to be nine, eight, and five. The eight will go there by Sudoku because we already have a five and a nine in the column. Eight is next to nine, not five. And so we're going to place the five right there. So what do we still have left to do? I believe we're down to just being able to use classic Sudoku to finish this. So this is going to be five, six, and nine here. Okay. And this is going to be three, seven, and eight, which I don't think I can fully resolve yet. So that's not a three because there's a three here, but other than that, we'll have to leave that for a moment. So I can't place a six in these cells and I can't place a six in these cells. So it's going to have to go there. That frees up some information here. So this is now one, two, three to finish the row. Three can't go there. So three goes there. This one, two pair gives us a four and a one and a nine. And from there, okay, this is the other half of our one, two pair in this column. And then this digit is our one remaining digit in the column, which is going to be a seven. This is now a four to finish this column. Now to finish this row, we're going to need one, two, three, and five. That's not two or five. That's not one or three. And that is not a one. Now we need one, two, four, and six. And so my four and six have to go in those two cells and they go in that order. Now the six is going to deal with this six, nine pair up here. The nine is going to deal with this seven, nine pair. I really love when the ending of a puzzle involves just bouncing all over the grid to do this final cleanup on pairs that just kind of feed into each other. It's not difficult, but something about it just feels really satisfying to do the final cleanup on a Sudoku in this way. So I don't have a two here because there's a two in the column. So there's one, three, two, one, two. Oh, my hands are getting really cold. Um, and that is how you solve Philip Newman's Look Ma No GSP. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Again, go check out twitch.tv slash SudokuCon this weekend. I really do think you're going to enjoy what we have to, to share with you over there. It's not a gas project, but it's a project that we, uh, we've been heavily involved with and that we very much support. So go check that out. Thank you for watching this video. You can solve the puzzle yourself using the link in the description below. And I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll see you next time.